Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to figure out fiscal quarters and fiscal years based on a date. So let's say for example we have like our standard calendar um, the overview of uh, January to December and we have the first three months or the quarters are separated into uh, three month increments, right? So quarter one is January, February, March, which is the first three months. Quarter two is April, May, and June, which is month four, five, and six, and etc. for quarter three and quarter four. This is actually fairly simple to do. Let's say, for example, I put in a date um, February 1st, 2017. How do I figure out the month? We can use the month function to do that. I would type the month function equals M O N. Let me tab to complete that and just select the date, press enter, and it will give me the correct month. So if I decide to put August 1st, 2017, it will give me the eighth month. Let's stick with the first month here, 1 1 2017. Press tab and it gives you back to the first month. For quarter, we're going to have to do something a little bit differently, but we're also going to use the month function. We're going to use the choose function in addition to the month function to figure out the quarter. In this instance, we're going to use equal choose, whoops, choose, press tab, and the index number is going to be the month function. So I'll type month and figure out the month there, and then tab, and then list a series of values. So the month function is going to take uh, the date and give you back the month either 1 or from 1 to 12, right? From 1 to 12 here. And based on that particular index number, 1 would be the first value. The first value that you want is going to be Q1. So we what or or the first three values that you want are going to be Q1. So we want to type uh, in in this instance we need to put uh, text strings in quotes. So it's going to be Q1. And then the second value is also going to be Q1. I'm going to copy this Control C to copy, and then let me go up to the formula bar here to do it, and then and then Control V to paste, and then paste another another uh, exam, and then now pasted the third uh, iteration of Q1. So when I select a date which is in January, February, or March, this will pick up either one, two, or three respectively, and this is going to be the first. Uh, value, second value, and third value. So depending on the choice of the month, it's always going to bring back Q1, which are these values, right? I have to do the same for the other values from April to December. So the second three values are going to be in Q2, so I need to do Q2. I'm just going to type Control V to insert that Q1 in there and just change this to Q2 and copy that. Control C to copy. Control V to paste, and now I have three repeating Q2s. I'm going to have to have three repeating Q4s. Let me put Control V to paste that Q2, change that to Q3. Control C to copy, Control V to paste twice, and then do it for Q4 now. I'm going to take that, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, change this to Q4. Let me put that comma back here, and take that, select that, Control C to copy and two more instances of Q4, right? Let me remove that comma, close parentheses. So now I should have 12 values here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? The first three are Q1, the second three are Q2, the third three are Q3, and the fourth three are Q4. Press enter, and now it tells me I'm in the right quarter, right? If I tried to put maybe July, July is the seventh month, type 7-1- uh, 2017, this should change to 7, and that should change into Q3. Because it's taking the seventh month, and the seventh value here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is Q3. See, month A9, which is taken from here, it figures out that is number 7, so it's looking for the seventh value. For the year, what we need to do is just use the year function. The year function press tab, I just type Y-E-R, press tab, select that cell, press enter, it will give me the year. So if we were in a calendar year, this is actually fairly easy to do. So what if we get into some fiscal years? 
that's going to be a little bit more challenging, but not too much. So, for example, let's say the fiscal month didn't begin in January. It began, let's say, August, right? August is the first of the fiscal month. Let me press Control Enter to complete that. And let me slide the fill handle down here and copy it onto the other cells here. You can notice that it just copied it as ones, but we have this little uh, autofill option, and I'm going to say fill series. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Now, the fifth month of December, of course, we have to go back to go over to January because that's the sixth month. So I'm going to type six, press control, enter, take the fill handle and just drag it over here to July. And it'll copy it over. I'll do the same thing and I'll do fill series. So the last month is in July, month number 12. Now we're going to have to change the quarters. So I'm going to take this, select this bunch of quarters here for Q1, control C to copy and put it over here for August, control V to paste, Q2, Control C to copy over here in November. Control V to paste. There's one instance of Q2 for Jan January has is also in Q2, so I'm gonna take that Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and for Q3, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and Q4, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So this table gives us a better visual view of what's happening. So then I can plug it into here a little bit better. I can get a better uh, view on that once I have this in the table. Let's say I have a date here, and I'm going to do 1-1-2017. Right, 1-1-2017, what fiscal month is it in? Now, this is going to be where I have to use the choose function to figure out. So I use the choose function here, but now I have to use the choose function to figure it out here, because now it's kind of offset differently. I'm going to take this and type in choose, and then the month, whoops, not moth, Let's do month and then select that. So it's going to give me the month number there. So it's going to take my month number, which is number one. And of course, February is going to be number two, number three, and number four with March, April, May. It's going to take this particular string of values in uh, the succession. And it's going to think the first place is January. So we're kind of, fo kind of fooling it in a way, saying the first value should actually be uh, six, right? Instead of one, it should be six. So I, sh I would be typing six here and then going and then typing seven and then eight all the way down to 12 and then start over one, two, three, four. However, instead of typing it all down, what I can do is I can just select it. Since I have this table, I'll just select all of this here. And you can see it, it selected the range from B4 to M4. I'm gonna select, highlight that, press the F9 key and now you notice that it kind of executed that. So it took that range and brought back the values in there. So instead of typing it all out, I can just select that and just press F9 to kind of execute it. I'm going to remove those curly braces now. And instead of having typing it all out, all I did was just select it and press the F9. And I have my range of values, values 1 to 12, which are kind of offset, right? So close parentheses, press Enter. And now it's taken me to month six, right? So calendar-wise, this is the first month. But fiscal month-wise, it's the sixth month. So if I want to go to the first month, August, let me try August here, 8-1-2017. You should notice after I execute that, that should be month number one now. So that is figuring out the fiscal month. How do I figure out the fiscal quarter? I'm going to do the same thing here. So type equal choose and press tab to complete that. My index number, which is the month function, press tab, select that, close the parentheses, and I'm gonna do the same thing here, right? The month is gonna be the same, but I'm gonna start at this particular setting here, right? I'm gonna select this range, and then go up here to the formula bar, select that, press the F9 key, and now you notice it brought back the values in that cell with it in quotes too because it recognizes its string. So I'm going to delete the curly bracket here, delete the curly bracket here, add a parentheses here, press enter, and now you notice that it's in Q1. August 1st is in Q1. You see that? Now if I change it back to the first of the year, 2017, press enter, it's the sixth month in Q2. So let's say, for example, we're in the sixth month of Q2. That means the fiscal year is 2017, right? 
The next fiscal year, which starts in August 1st, Q1, should be 2018. You can't really do that here, right? So if I put equals year and select that, it's going to figure out, okay, that's correct. The, the January 1st, calendar-wise, it's a six-month in Q2. But what if we type August 1st? August 1st, 2017. That's correct. It's the first month of the fiscal year and the first quarter of the fiscal year. But it actually should be the next fiscal year, which should be 20, uh, 2018. Well, there's a, there's a way you can get around that. What we can do is we can create an if statement here. I'll type plus if. I'm going to say if the, that month value, select that is greater than or equal to the number 8, which we're saying is the 8th month calendar-wise, but it is the first month of the physical calendar. If it's greater than number 8, then we're going to give it a 1. If it's not, it's going to be a 0. So what it's that saying is if this is greater than or equal to 1, we're going to give it a 1. So that 1 is going to add to that year of here. So 2017 plus 1 is 2018. Right? So press enter and whoops. You notice they came back with a funny date and that's because Excel sees dates as serial numbers. We have the date here. So let me show you what's happening. I'm going to press control 1 to bring up the formatting and what Excel really sees is the number 2018 as a number in itself. And since I have the cell formatted as a date, it's formatting it as a date. The, the dates in Excel begin with a number 1, and 2, 3, and 4, and the number 1 translates to, I think, January 1st, 1901, something like that. So what we want to do is turn this into general, right? Because we want to figure out the year. So that correctly puts it at 2018. It's not really the date 2018 or the year, but it's actually the number 2018, if that makes any sense. If I wanted to change this to, if I change this back to January 1st, 2017. Now you know that will go back to 2017 and it's going to give me the sixth month and the second quarter. So press enter. You'll now notice that it correctly has identified the correct fiscal year 2017, uh, the sixth month, which is here, and the quarter, which is Q2. Right? If I try another date, let's say uh, May 5, 1, 2017, it should point me down here where I'm in the 10th month. It's going to be Q4. And since we're not near August, it's going to still be 2017. Press Enter. Month 10, Q4, 2017. So that's how you can figure out the fiscal year uh, based on a date. Uh, you can do the calendar year. It's fairly simple with the month. But when we get to the quarter, you need to use the choose statement. And for the year, just the year function would do. If we're doing fiscal uh, month, quarter, and year, it, it's a little bit more work. You've got the month function, but we're, we're still using the choose with the month function and the quarter. You're doing the same thing here and for the year. It's a little bit of a combination of the year function and the if statement with the mon month function. Having this particular table is probably a good idea to help you see it a little bit better and to give you some idea of how you can uh, translate between the calendar months and calendar quarters to fiscal month and fiscal quarters. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.